Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel. I have asked you on Instagram what topic I should cover next and you have sent in so many good proposals. One of the most sent in proposal was how to actually build the user interface without storyboard, without using interface builder. And that's what this video is about. We are going to build from scratch our first iOS app without using storyboard, actually deleting it and using pure Swift code, not only to create our first view, but also add text and a button using auto layout, also just all in Swift code. Let's dive right into it and open a new or create a new Xcode project. Let's do create a new project and call it, oh yeah, single view application, of course. And let's call it Ocarina of Time for the sake of my Zelda love. Location is desktop, create it, and let's resize it to something that fits with the simulator that will appear in a second. The first thing that we are going to do is of course run and see that everything works. Now we are firing up the simulator. Let's make it a little bit smaller so I have space for myself. I think that, that works fine. So it opens the app and we see a white screen. That's basically it. The main storyboard does that for us. It will actually go to the app delegate right here and will assign this local property a new UI window setting the view controller right here as the root view controller of that UI window and um, make the window a key window, which means it is the window that we are viewing. And it's also setting the background color white as it seems. So that's all the main storyboard does. If we now delete it, select, delete, move to trash, goodbye, and we rerun that project. All these things I've just mentioned are missing our app launches, but crashes. And then we go, we will get directed to app delegate because that's where the crash happens. We don't have a window that is expected. Now we have to do that our own. And so how to create a new UI window? It's basically just initiating a new UI window, but it expects a frame, CG rect. Where do we get that frame? What is this frame? This frame is basically the size of the window and we want that window to be exact the size of the device we are running our app in. It could be the iPad, could be a smaller iPhone, iPhone 4 or iPhone XS. It should always be the size of the device. And we get the size by accessing UI screen, main and bounce. If we hit jump to definition with command, click and then enter, we see that this one returns bounce of entire screen in points. We're not talking pixels in iOS land, so that's why it's called points. So it returns the bounce of the entire screen, that's what we want, and it returns it as a CG rect, that's what we want as well. So let's take that, cut it out, and assign window equal to a new UI window, and using the frame initiator, and passing in our screen size. That's not all that uh, the storyboard did for us. I also mentioned it set the root view controller for us. And so window.rootViewController expects to have a view controller assigned. This value is by default nil. We have to assign a, a view controller to it. That is representing our entry point of our app. This is the first view controller that will be uh, displayed when we open our app. Let's have a look. We have one view control by default right here. Let's demystify it. I don't, I have a feeling like this is something special. No, it's not. It's, this is just a class. It's just view controller. It's a random file. We could even like, we could delete that one and just uh, say class um, Zelda view. Let's, I don't know, like it's, uh, it's so simple. Let's call it my uh, simple class. 
and it inherits from UI view controller and that's basically it. From By inheriting from UI view controller we get some properties and some functions that are used by other classes that are expecting view controller types such as if we look at window if we go back to app delegate sorry for that i just uh, immediately hit the back button i think so app delegate window dot root view controller that one ex expects a type ui view controller and if we assign our how did we call it uh that's the thing about naming my simple class right my simple class if we call it like that if we assign it like that that's that's working. I mean, it's it's all it needs. And the last thing, as I mentioned, uh, the storyboard was doing or making our window the key window, the key window we are actually viewing when opening our app. And so we have to call the convenient function make key and visible. So make that window right here a key window and make it visible as well. As far as I know, the window is by default visible. So the property window is hidden is by default false meaning it's not hidden yet by default that window is not is key window and so we have to make it a key window an app can only have one key window at a time if we look up window is key window and we see on the right side the documentation i think it would say something like that so only one window at a time may be the key window you can read through that documentation. It helps a lot for understanding. All right, so that's all we need. And if we run that app again, let's try it. We saw it had a white screen, but it crashed, right? If we rerun it, it shouldn't crash. And it does crash. And let's see if it is related to having main still in our project information, which is still a relation to our main storyboard that does not exist let's delete that i don't want i don't like to have or to keep any reference to something that does not exist anymore let's hit command shift and k for cleaning just to be sure nothing is cached or underneath still existing that is not up to date and rerun that app and we will see a error because of what does it say why do we have an error right here uh, Ocarina of Time app, it says couldn't find the storyboard main. Yeah, but we are not using main anymore. My simple class is a UI view controller. It should work. Let's delete uh, derived data because I have had Ocarina of Time, that project once again. Command shift K for clean. And let's rerun that app again. Feels like there is some reference left over in the background. Shouldn't be. For you, it should just work. But that's the thing. We get stuck. We have to unstuck. We have to either look up what is possible to do or uh, by memory know what things can be done to, to solve that challenge. Let's hope it works. It takes some time to run it again for some reason. Maybe because we just cleaned and it has to do a lot of stuff that it didn't before. Let's just rerun it. Or did it actually work? It shouldn't. So Ocarina of Time. And it works. We have a black screen and it, not, it does not crash. Why do we have a black screen? As I mentioned in the beginning, the main storyboard uh, seem to also have set the view background color to white. So that's what we could do as well. We go to our our simple class and override the view did load uh, hook. I call it hook because these functions are getting called and we can just like override them and put our own code inside of it <clears throat> and be sure they are called. And um, so let's say our view because as I said, UI view controller, by inheriting from it, we, we are getting properties and functions. And one property is view. And that is what is added to the, um, what we see right now in the, in the app, because it's by default added by the app delegate when we set the UI view controller as a root controller. This view from that con view controller will be used to display as the first view hope that makes sense background color let's put it to white just as the main storyboard did that in the beginning 
and it's run and it's running and it's white. Okay, so we wanted to do a um, text label, right? Now the first thing that we will do is create a new, let's say, text label and call it uh, actually initiate UI label and then dot text and call it or actually not call it but uh, put hey listen as a text property of that label we will add that view because it's UI label is inheriting from UI view so it's also a view and we will add that view as a sub view to our current view of the UI view controller uh, which expects a UI view so that's all matching up if we add that and we run that we won't see anything because we haven't positioned that text label yet let's do that using auto layout what we have to do is we will have to say auto translate auto resizing mask into constraints equals false by default it's true and it will not allow us to or it will not apply our auto constraint auto, auto layouts that we are setting right now which are for example let's say we want our text to be at the top left corner which means we want the top anchor of our text label to be constrained to equal to the top anchor of the view and then we want to activate it we also have to activate our constraint like that so from the view we have a top anchor and that one should be equal to our text label so we have the top equal to the same top um, it's some sort of say self-explanatory and the left anchor actually we will see there is a left anchor we won't use that best practice is actually leading anchor because leading anchor means for us as a english or german um, language means that our reading starts from left to right right we say leading and if we have English or German text, it starts from left to right. If it's Arabic text, I think it starts from right to left and leading is then on the right side. So we don't have to care about, okay, now it's a different language. Now we use right anchor. In our language, we, we use left anchor. No, we just say leading anchor and it's always uh, for the right language on the right side. So that's why it's uh, best practice to use leading anchor instead of left or right as except you know what you're doing and you expect it to be just like that for example i think views uh it might make sense to align them on left and right right if you have an image view it doesn't really make sense to like whoa to like you know to to switch the left and right anyway leading anchor should be constrained equal to the view leading anchor also is active equals true and if we hit, I think the text should be black by default. If we hit command R for running the app, we see on the top left corner, hey, listen. So we have set our label now. Sure, it's overlapping or underneath actually some other stuff that is default. And we don't want that. We don't want to even care about that. So how do we solve that issue? It's super simple. We have um, a safe area to work with and we can access that safe area let's say we don't know where actually these all this information ends let's say the top navigation not not the top navigation but the status bar for example uh, where does it really end we could some sort of measure it if we um, look in other apps or whatever and just give a margin to our text label but that's very finicky and very manual and you have to take care of that we don't want that we want to have it simple and there is for this view that we are right now in for the view control there are margins on the top left right and bottom that um, gives us a distance to all these sites to be in a safe area and we can get that by layout guide a margins guide that's the um, basically the safe area let's assign that to a variable called layout and use that instead of the view if we say layout top anchor and layout leading anchor let's do that and command r run it it should be displayed on the top left corner in the safe area there we go all safe inside of it and we don't have to care about all the other stuff that happens around it now let's add a button okay button will be added by 
let's say a new button is a new UI button. We set a title for that button for the normal state. Let's say we answer the uh, outcry of, hey, listen. And let's add to our view a new sub view, which is our button. The button is also inheriting from UI view. We won't see anything because we haven't set any constraints yet. So we have to also deactivate the translators auto resizing mask into constraints. What a long word. Where do we want to have it? What, do we want to have it centered? Let's do it centered. So there is a center X anchor for the X axis and for the Y axis. So let's do it centered on both. Let's do center X axis and then constrain it equal to from the layout, the center X axis. And then of course, activate it equal to true. Let's copy that whole line because the same is true for the Y axis. We just have to change the X to Y. And if we add that, we should have a button in the middle of the screen. Let's see if that worked. And we don't see anything because I think the color of the button text is white. Let's see if we can have set title color equal to blue for normal. There we go. Set title color. And then we should see a button in the middle of it. Right. Nothing happens if we click it. Let's uh, do a function that says answer action. And let's change the label text if we click that button to, for example, oh, we cannot access text label because it's not the global variable. Let's do that for short. Let's do a text label, UI label global. And inside here, instead of uh, like declaring it, we will just assign it. So now we can have text label down here and say text label is uh, dot text. It's dangerous to go alone take this <laughs> okay there is no sword right uh where well is there a sword emoji i don't know so we can say button dot at target self and then the action hashtag selector and whenever you see hashtag selector there should ring a bell inside your head saying okay i'm now about to pass in the function that should be called when i hit that button answer action that function uh on upside up in touch up inside that function must have a keyword in front of it that says add objective c because xcode will now complain well it's not exposed to objective c please add add objective c in front of your button that's all it needs command r for running the app again and objective c add objective c is nothing magic that's all it needs if you use hashtag selector that's all it needs. Just add objective C in front of the function that you're passing into the selector. All you need to know, no magic. Okay, if we hit answer, it's dangerous to go along. Take this and it worked. Now we have set up our first iOS app using pure Swift code. We have <laughs> deleted main storyboard. We have added a text label and a button using auto layout purely in code. And there you go. Basically, if you like these kind of tutorials, hit that like button and let me know by that. Also comment under this video whether I have something to improve, like give me any kind of feedback, whether I have to um, more in detail explain so stuff or whether you have another proposal for another topic. Also, if you want the source code, you can see in the description a link to my Patreon site and support me by um, becoming a supporter and get that source code in one of these tiers because I want to do that full time to like teach Swift code and need you to support me in order to be able to do that. Have a great time. Let me know whether you liked it or not and see you in the next video and see you on Instagram. Also the link is in the description. Bye.